The issues that I'm going to talk to you about will definitely sound like a rerun from last year because uh, the bills are basically the same ones I probably talked with you about last year, just kind of in a slightly different version. Uh, I think. Uh, last year when we were here, we were talking about predictable scheduling, reliable scheduling, predictive scheduling, whatever term they want to utilize to uh, try to garner some more support for it. But basically, it's a mandate on all employers to have advance notice of schedules for their employees. Um, last year's version was 14 days. Um, and that bill was started on the assembly. Uh, it got to the assembly floor, and it was never brought up by the author because he was so far short on votes uh, that he knew that if he brought it up on the floor, it would be uh, it would be it would be killed. So he never brought it up. Um, and that one was a 14-day notice of a schedule, and it was applicable to 500 uh, employers with 500 or more employees. So it was really attacking the larger um, companies in the state. Well, given the success or lack thereof on that bill last year, um, a new version has been introduced on the Senate side. Um, you would think it would be more narrow than what was offered yes, uh, last year, but in fact, it's more expansive. So this year, Senator Connie Leva has introduced SB 878, which is being called reliable scheduling, and it's applicable to any size employer in the retail, grocery, or uh, restaurant industry. It doesn't matter if you only have one employee, you would be under the provisions of this bill. Um, instead of a 14-day notice of a schedule, it's a 28-day notice of a schedule. <laughs> 28 days uh, that you would have to have a schedule out for your employees telling them what their work schedule was. And similar to last year's bill, if you made any changes to that schedule, you'd be subject to the Private Attorney General Act under the Labor Code, which has statutory penalties per employee, per pay period for a violation. And then if you made any uh, changes with less than seven days notice, you'd be subject to what they've termed modification pay. Um, and the modification pay, is, uh, the amount would be determinative on what the employee's scheduled shift was. So if they were eight hours, if you had a scheduled shift of eight hours and you changed it with less than seven days notice, you would have to pay that employee four hours of modification pay um, for any changes. And these changes are even changes that are requested by the employee. You could be uh, penalized for doing that. And of course, if you change the schedule because one employee can't come in and so you have to call in another employee with less than seven days notice, that could potentially trigger the four hours or some uh, amount there of a modification pay. In addition, uh, Senator Leva has uh, taken from the paid sick leave uh, law that has been so easy to implement, I'm sure, by a lot of businesses. She's taken the enforcement piece of that law and put it into uh, the, the predictive scheduling bill. And so now, in addition to the modification pay, you can also have labor commissioner investigation enforcement, attorney general enforcement and investigation, three separate uh, potentials for $4,000 penalties, as well as a private right of action and a presumption of retaliation if any adverse employment action is taken against an employee who complains that you changed their schedule, were not complying with the predictive uh, scheduling uh, bill, etc. So it is a, a pretty significant bill. Um, we are certainly working on it on the Senate side. The uh, major political change this year is it's being sponsored and supported by the California Labor Federation, which is obviously one of the strongest political interests up here at the Capitol and is certainly um, a worthy opponent um, and has been pretty successful with their sponsored bills over the last five or six years. They have been the sponsor of many of the big labor bills that you've seen the governor sign over the last five or six years. So SB 878 is certainly one to watch and certainly one to be concerned with for all employers um, in California.